truck would go different speeds and like, we have different states of balance as they come slowly and eventually they start to grow. And as they're growing, it's coming more and more uphill as they slow down. It's something which goes on developing through their life. But there's nothing wrong with, with, you know, with starting to give young horses the idea of what it's like to become a little bit grown up. That the level three collective trough would be actually rather good. Sit on that. Stay there. Sit on that. Good. No lower than that at the pole. Stay up to the right. That's a good head. That's a good job. That's a good job. Change the rain. Good. 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 I go go rise into a medium trough somehow. Good. That's much slower. Work on the truck. Good. There's not going to be a huge difference between your work on the truck and your collective truck at level three, okay? One is just a slightly shorter version of the other. Truck and shoulder in now.
outside round against the neck. Yeah. Um, and pushing with the outside leg for the shoulders to come across, but controlling the hind coil with the inside leg. Absolutely, but, absolutely wrong. Okay. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um, totally logical. Yeah. Very sensible. It will work in the short term. Right. But we don't ever do it that way. Yeah. Because, uh, the reason for riding shoulder in is, is more than just performing um, the movement in the chest. Yes, yeah. it is a fundamental. It is a fundamental controlling exercise um, of, of the shoulders. Yeah. Um, um, and and uh, uh, the control that we'll need for the rest of the horse's life as you start doing the more advanced stuff. If you start riding your pirouettes and your half passes, you set them up for changes to the piano. So we have to control the shoulders. Shoulders of the dog control. Yeah. Now you're, uh, um, we've got two ways of controlling the shoulders, as you know. One is from the leg, doing that exercise that you you did earlier on, pushing yeah. the shoulder over. All you're doing is simply putting one leg on the girth. If you increase the pressure of one leg, the shoulders will have to go the other way. We have to train them to do that. The other way of moving the shoulder is by neck ring. And when we come to do shoulder ring, we always do it. Um, the same way, you, you turn the, the, the horse in off the track as if you're going to make a circle, first step for yep. circle. Once the shoulder is in, then the inside leg forward tries to push the shoulder back out again. And the outside rein against the neck stops it from coming out of the track, you're trying to neck rein the shoulder in. We do not control the hind leg at all. The inside leg should be forwards trying to push the shoulder out. The outside rein against the neck is trying to bring the shoulder in. We are controlling the shoulders between these two opposite influences. Our outside leg is a complete holder. You understand? Yes. What you are doing will work for shouldering. Totally logical and sensible, but wrong. And you will not know that it's wrong yes. yet until you get on to trying to control shoulders and half parts and things like that. Mm. So right. she's got to pick up the, out, the, the feel of the outside rein on her neck. She's it's got a to learn. She's to got to, she's got to bring to bring well, horses have to neck rein. Yeah. So you can wrap that up with all the fancy language as yeah. you like. But you uh, just bring the shoulder in now off the track for a second. So you turn. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't move because that's, that's way too much. But right. you turn as if you're going to start a circle. Then your inside leg on the girl tries to push the shoulder out, and the outside rein gently against the neck. And uh, uh, it's keeping, it's stopping the shoulder from falling out. So all we're doing is juggling the shoulder between those two opposite influences. Are you with me? Mm. Yeah. Don't do it. Uh, do it this way. Do it in walk down the long side. Your outside leg has a hobble day, okay? Just walk on. So bring the turn in, bring the shoulder in, keep your inside leg forward. Now you should be, once if the shoulder in is good, you should be able to release the inside leg. Hold up. The outside leg does nothing at all. Just suckle it up. Good. So you just have to increase the angle a little bit more if you will. Just play. Good. So you think of your seat being the inside. Brilliant. I know that's great. Now turn around. I'm doing that Hello. I don't know. I can't see if you're doing it with the right feel. You look good. It is always the same. The feel of control between your inside leg and your outside brain. If you're doing proper neck brain in Western, you can neck brain with no pressure on the mouth at all, so the outside brain should not be strong. The inside leg, forward, outside brain, loose your inside brain. Oh, hi, Louise. Very good. 
simple as that. Yeah. Simple as that. You I've have been to using too much outside me. Well, you don't need your outside. So quite everything. That's why it's looking things like that. Well, no, it's so moving the shoulders off with your outside leg forward. As I said, it's completely logical. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got your bank number on you? Yeah. I've got the music. He has yeah. got the bank number on him. Do you want it now? No, no, no. Okay, so when, when Tony is finished, you want. So it's going to be more credit payment, so you need your bank number. Tony is going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, right, okay. All right, thanks, please. Bye. Got it? You got it? No, yeah, you've got to have the first time you want that one. She was only checking that you've got one more. Yeah. <laughs> Again, just slip the plate shoulder in. Good. So the outside range gets next. The inside leg. The level three, all you want is just a little bit more light in the top, but you're right to do it with a fairly gentle drop at the moment. And you can sit, 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 Brilliant. I think this is wonderful work. This is really delightful, charming work. Good. So you feel the ins if the horse does not obey the inside leg enough, the instinct, in instinct is always to help them too much with the inside rein. And what you, if you feel yourself crossing your inside hand over to the outside, you know you've not got enough control of the shoulder from your inside leg. So you go back and do that pushing over stuff that we did on the other rein, uh, just to make them the shoulder is not a particularly good exercise for actually improving the control from the inside leg. It's a very good exercise for testing whether you're in control from that inside leg. Okay, a half circle to the center line. And push over from your left leg. So start pushing now, front leg go. That's the exercise you use to keep the control from the leg. Are you with me? So what you did there, that pushing over, that is half of Sorry? shoulder in. That's not a good idea. Half of shoulder in. That's very good. Very, very good. Very good. Now go rising from shoulder in. And in your shoulder in, drop a little faster. Shoulder in. And drop a little bit more. Good. Good. Now come a little slow. Oh. Well done. Now walk and lose strength. I think you're brilliant, Gil. I think that change of speed in shoulder in becomes, it's quite difficult. It's harder than it seems. But it's quite valuable to, horses tend to um, switch off the, the energy in shoulder in. You know, and, and, in a way, we are we let them switch off. We're happy for them to go to a slightly more gentle trot to start with, just so we get the feeling of control. Yes. But once we've got it, we then want to say, right, I want more trot. Stay shoulder in, but I want more trot. Um, um, if you if you do the gentle stuff for too long, then horses, and the, the same applies to all the lateral work. If you do it gently for too long, horses get used to switching off and going to uh, too, too quiet in the lateral work. And it can be quite difficult to stimulate them and let them know that they can be expressive. Lateral work always tends to decrease engagement. Yes. And then you read the books, they tell you that the purpose of shouldering is to engage yes. the inside hind leg. Yes, of course, it's absolute total problem. It does the opposite. I have never in my life seen a horse go into shoulder in and end up being more engaged. Never. It's just one of these myths that sort of evolved and it still gets handed down. It's just the, the standard myth about shoulder in. Shoulder in is simply a controlling exercise. <clears throat> right, 
So the next once you've got that and that shoulder is pretty darn good, yeah. then you've got to start controlling the hind legs. Yeah. So have you done any of that? Yeah, no, that's good. Good. Right. Just lay some quarters in now. This is much easier to teach than most courses. So. Okay, now stop. Now move the hind legs in a bit more. Good. Now go on down the long side like that. That way. Take your outside leg a long way back. Okay, come on, mate. Move your little bottom in. That's very good. Very good. We try to keep the outside range very soft and very forward feeling so we can allow the bend to the inside. The inside leg stays just quiet and forwards to the inside range, the inside leg and the front leg is on the track. The bend a little bit from the inside. The outside leg needs to be a little bit more dominant. Okay, you can jump on that over little one. Good. The outside leg at this stage will be quite a long way back. Just Nothing subtle. Good, so good job on the whole thing done. So the horse becomes quite clear and distinct between having the shoulders controlled and having the hind legs controlled. Very good. Very good. Very good. So the first priority in, in the course is then is to have the quarters in, you know, to have enough angle. The second priority will be to make sure the shoe's going round and soft in the rain. The final priority will be the bend. Well, actually, probably it's not quite true. The third priority will be that, the final priority, the priority will be the good of that bend. So turn around, try the other way. That's so not bad, it's got, to, it's got to be a little bit more round and a little bit more flowing than that but it's a good start. The number one priority, outside leg goes back, back to quarters. Hello, yeah. Move the bounce in. Move the hind legs in, please, little one. Good. Keep your seat over to the inside. Keep your inside leg quietly on the go. That's right. Keep the inside rein there. Probably release the outside rein for a few strides. The instinct, if she does not obey the outside leg enough, your instinct will be to make her go sideways by pulling the outside rein. Just refuse to do that. So when we're teaching the travel, I will often loose the outside rein completely. Once they know it, then I will do everything. The air aim is to do all the exercises with an even contact once they know it. But because the desire to use the outside rein is very strong in most people, certainly it is in me, I will lose the outside rein while the horse is learning to do these things. Well done. Well done. So that's your quarters in. Now, can you ask it to be a little bit rounder? Stay quarters in. Stay cool to the Come a little round up. Just keep quarters in there. Keep your seat over to the inside of the ball. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. So I want the hair to be at the end at the end of the day it's only just walk. Yes. And the walk needs to be the same yeah. in terms of roundness. Yeah. There's lots of things going on. Just stop now. You are quite ready to be doing these things. You are ready to be working with horse like a, a baby level three horse. Now, there are lots of things which we do instinctively here that, that, that are uh, counterproductive. In order to be stronger with our outside leg, the instinct is to have our seat to the outside. Don't sit to the inside. The horse is going to become sensitive to that leg back. If they don't obey the outside leg enough, as well as sitting to the outside, we also tend to pull the outside brain. Don't. The instinct is, is often to, to keep the inside leg off, just keep it quietly down. I felt when I let go of the inside right, I pulled the outside right, I felt the difference yeah. it made. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Did you but yeah, but uh, I don't trust myself when I'm teaching, I've got a baby or something, starting going sideways now. I do not 
trust myself yeah. now. Even now, I don't trust myself to keep a soft outside rain without helping the horse. It is such a big desire to slightly use the outside rein. If you pull the outside rein, you can make the horse go sideways with no outside leg at all. Yeah. But don't. So I will loose the outside rein until I know the horse is honest off the leg. I put the leg on, put the leg back, press back, they move. Yeah. And what we'll do quite often is a few steps, quarters in, then go straight, quarters in, go straight, quarters in, straight. Yeah. You get them moving increasingly rapidly off yeah. that outside leg. When they're honest to that leg, then I'll go back and do it with an even soft one. But you're ready to play with that. And once you can do quarters in, in walk, you do it in trot. Quarters in is exactly the same as half a bar. Yeah. So it's, once you can ride quarters in, you'll do half a bar across the arena. Uh, quarters in across the arena, which is yeah. half a bar. So you get on and play with these things. For the moment, I want to have a look at some catching. Yeah. So big circle, nice walk. Catch over the front walk. Can I have a walk? Yeah. Well done. 
difficult to slow the canvas to shorten the neck instead of slowing down. That's not being naughty. You will get this. You may have you may find that you're being quite strong for a few strides, strong in the way and strong in the leg. Um, you just have to basically hold them into that slower canvas. Show them for four or five strides they can go slow. Just let the stretch be And once they realize they can canter with a slow speed, you then find yourself doing it lighter and lighter and lighter and holding the speed of it. But sometimes you have to keep it a little bit physical to say, look here, you really can't do this. You sit back, you shove your legs on, and you, it's a little bit crude, really, but uh, you just have to break the uh, to have a bit of power Position-wise, you look really good, except at times you become a little bit concave over your collarbone. Okay. And you need to stay just a little bit wider your upper body. Yeah. Be careful how you do that, yeah. because it's not a matter of lifting the front of your body up or anything. It's a matter of both the front and the back of your body needs to become a little bit wider, a little bit longer. So you feel the tips of your shoulders become a little bit further apart. Yeah. Don't lift up the front of your body. It's not the old military chest up and out business. It's just weight that you want in the body. Yeah. It's just you'll see on this on a bit of video. You just sometimes look a little bit a little bit scrunched. It's nothing nothing bad at all. It's just a little bit of better upper body posture. You can have a look at it the video and see what you're about. It just tidies up the picture. It also gives it gives the arm a bit more freedom to stay wide in your body. Are you with me? But you have to be careful here to give the, the wrong correction. If you, if you do, you know, the, the normal corrections you hear are sort of people who just walk quickly. The normal corrections you hear are people that roll their shoulder blades together across the back of the body. And that, that's, that's, that's not good. Because the wrong correction will make you stiffer. The width, both the front and the back of the body, so you really do feel. When you're sitting well, you actually feel triangular. You feel you have a wide upper body, and you have to flow out from a narrow waist up to a wide upper body. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Sit still. You're screwing side to side here. Don't do that. It's not the hub That's it. That's on walk. Nice comfort to walk and walk to catch your position. Yeah. You can chuck these questions at all. Go on a circle, just catch it.
brilliant to go. And this course is going to be really quite flat. It's actually quite serious. And she's quite a, it's just a little difficult to slow down the count for the moment. Okay. Now you're still, you do, in your brain, you, you, you are not to think of a canter transition as being forward. It's a change of gear. You trot, you change gear. You don't ride forward. It does not matter at all. Just trot. Work out why. She rolls her neck up, shortens the neck too much. Well done, well done, there they go, yeah. Now go down the right, go around the arena, try not to let the length go down the arena, just try not to go faster. Steady, good. The next, uh, come up the centre line, push the shoulders over from your left leg. So just, just like you did in trot, never mind, catch on, catch on. Good, centre line, push the front legs over. The front leg, very good, very good. Pass up, steady. The next long side, make a loop. Just come in, sort of five metres and then go back out. Go on, Jay, steady. Sit back. Sit back. I just lost the stone. Oh, God. Go to the canter on, make a finish your circle, sit and breathe up. Canter on. Good, lovely transition. Now make a loop down the next long side. Say five meter loop. your seat over to your left. Don't, don't take her back to the track with your seat to the other, to the outside. Are you with me? Yeah. Sit back, sit back, sit. Go on, canter, 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 <coughs> Come on, girl, canter, let's canter. You just, just said to go into block mode and you just think of canter. You're running the trot brilliantly. You'll be the same as canter. Sit back, please. Ride around the arena down the bottom, ride the corners reasonably small, and then make a loop next to the long side. All your canter, whichever way you're turning, when you're in canter left, you think of sitting to the left. Come on, I don't want to circle, I want to loop. Sit to the left. Well done. There's going to be your right rein against the neck that stops her from collapsing back to the track too quickly. Your right rein against the neck. Hey, 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 hey. Sit, trot, yeah, when you're ready, canter, trot. Quietly canter, sit. Yeah, yeah. Come on, canter on. 
That's right. Good, now make your loop. Well done. Keep your inside leg forward. You don't so much, you don't push her back to the track. You're not ready to push her back to the track. You steer her back to the track. You don't drive back from your left leg forward. You look very good. Very good. Just one loop, you know, one bigger loop. Good. Now start to go back. Smoothly back to your seat to your inside. Don't drive her back. Your left leg forward. Your seat to the left. Good one. On. Left leg forward, left leg forward, pat her, pat her, and then ask her to trot, change the range, do the same thing the other way. simple than you were riding before. You're not pushing back, you're not driving, you're just steering out and then steering back in again. You keep your feet to the inside, keep a tiny bend to the right, a tiny bend to the right. Both legs forward, having a brilliant, brilliant. Come on to a circle and bring your hands back dead slow for a few strides. Slow, come slow. Ho, 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 yes. Yes, go on, good girl, he's alright, good girl. Good. She's not naughty or lazy, she just gets it wrong. Teach her. Sit back, sweetheart, sit back, sit back, sit back. Get off her plane with us. Good, good, good. Slow it, slow it, slow it. Good girl. I'm going to touch, touch, touch. It's alright. Don't, don't bluster, don't just tell her to catch. Don't panic. Good girl. Good girl. Pack her, brilliant. Now let her stretch in canter. You will break with the trot, just help her. Good. Okay, nice trot stretch. This is a really quite a flash horse trend. And I think you're doing a fabulous job with the trot. I think you've got, to, you've got to get on and get a bit more mileage in canter. She's got a big canter, a wonderful canter. She finds it a little difficult, the concept of going slowly. And this is partly because you thrust her forward a little bit. You throw everything behind it and slap. Partly she finds it difficult because she gets a little bit short in the neck. She shortens the neck rather than slows the speed of the last or two. And that's something you're just going to have to go through. You've just got to teach her. You're cantering at 20 miles an hour, you want her to go 10 miles an hour, it's going to happen, even if it's not pretty. Yeah. The first few hundred times, don't throw the reins at her now in the, in the stretching piece. Stretch with a contact. So the first few hundred times, you may find that you slow down and canter, you may find that it's a bit rocky, it's a bit tense, it's a bit... It's a bit... Um, un, uh, uh, it's a bit uncoordinated and a bit wacko. Uh, don't worry about it. No. As long as you get the speed for a few steps and then go forwards, you do it again, get your speed, go forwards, get the slow speed, go forwards. On. Gradually she realizes that cantering slow is perfectly possible. It'll all happen more and more nicely. learn to canter faster, a little fast and flat, it can be quite difficult to get into their brain the idea that less than 20 miles an hour is possible in canter. So you have to hold it. It's one of the times we sometimes, for a few days, we have to be actually quite strong. Simply say, you will canter and you will come yes. slow. Show them for a few strides, let them go. Yes. Again, show them, let them go. Yes. Yes. Uh, her canter, often when horses weren't slow, 
this because their cancer is bloody awful. They, you know, horses with a weak canter, a weak rhythm in canter, they just don't seem to manage the canter stuff. Her canter is extraordinarily good. It's just a little bit tense, and plus she just got in the habit of yeah. cantering at speed. Like you say, it's just mileage because I haven't, I haven't seen a lot of time. Yeah. No. Um, it's a start now, isn't it, girl? It's a start. I think she's very, very talented. And I think you look, I think the two of you, this is going to be really a really neat combination. You should be aiming to complete level three by the end of this year. And then level three to level four is a very, very simple jump. Yeah. Where you are now, level one to level three is level two fits in somewhere. That's easy. Yeah. yeah. Level you can do level two from level one. They can do level one, they can hack to a level two. Yeah. Level two to three is, is quite a significant jump. You expect a significant increase in control. And they have to get the idea of you know, going sideways and changing the speed in canter, yeah. medium canter, collective canter. Canter to walk, canter to walk, and things like that. It's, it's a big jump, and that's what you're going to be doing over the next few months. It's just giving her the idea. I mean, Trot, you could pretty well, within a week, you'll be able to ride a level three Trot work. Pretty way I hear that. I mean, I'm not saying do it brilliantly, but I do it adequately. Uh, canter might take you three, four months before, before you have that control. It will just come by cantering. Just need my. Um, Tony, do you need a receipt? I do. I, okay, I have a receipt book. If, I, no, we've got a receipt book okay, here, but Bill can put his number, his bank number on the, the receipt. Well, I'm number as well. Yeah, that, that's